Hello, hello, hello. Everyone, thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Real Housewives of Potomac, the reunion for season three, part one. Um, I came on today, well, yesterday, because it's basically it's four o'clock in the morning right now, and um, this is my last review for the night. But this will not be up until around 11 o'clock in the morning. You guys should see this, hopefully, well, hopefully by 11, later than 12. Um, we shall see how that goes. Anyway. My eye is like driving crazy right now. It's like an eyelash gonna fall off into my eye. I'm sorry, y'all. And I refuse to start this over because again, it's four o'clock in the morning. Let's put it off. Anyway, um, if you have not done so already, please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. Um, and do not just subscribe to subscribe, subscribe, look around, view some videos, like be an active subscriber. Um do not forget to also hit the notification bell because it lets you know when I have new videos up, up, up. Um, so, you know, the reunion, I mean, it was, it was good. I'm hoping that, you know, I'm hoping it's not a three-parter. I do not want a three-part reunion. Um, because I want to see Mary, oh, is it, is it Mary Domestic coming on next? No, I don't think it's coming on next. That might not even come out until like October. Because Mary Domestic and Beyond Walk while uh house house is on i don't know anyway um yeah, but i don't want a three-part reunion so we found a, a couple things up front you know we see that we found out that karen's father passed away which is so so sad you know what i'm saying and it was two weeks before the reunion was taped so he was buried as they say on a thursday and they she was there on a tuesday so it's like you know four or five days later um that she, she at the reunion i would have taken a, a sick day like i would not have came to the reunion Losing a parent, you are not ready emotionally, mentally, to handle the stress of a reunion. I, 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 I she should stay home. I really, I really felt like she. You know, even though I'm sure she did well, that's a, I don't know. I would have not went to the reunion. That's just me. Um, we see that Juan also is not there because he's somewhere coaching uh, the kids' league or whatever. Um, the kids, their kids had a game. He's the coach of the kids' team, so he was there doing that. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, they brought up how last year they had to basically kind of force him to be there. Um, but she said, yeah, because last year he was like in so much, it was so much, you know, controversy and like messiness, messiness around it. She's like, this season, like, we're fine. Like, we're, we're, we're perfectly okay. Um, Candace is still saying how people recognize her at airports as being Miss, um, United States. I'm my like, girl. No one recognized you. I, look, I forgot that was even a real pageant for one. Even Andy said, like, I did not even know about that pageant. Like, so people at airports really, well, yeah, if you're in the pageant world, so I'm like, all the pageant people at airports, girl, bye. No one, no one knows who you are. You know, and that wig, she wearing that same wig, and it still looks tangled. Girl, you don't have no wig brush. I have three wig brushes at my house. I don't even have a wig. Like, I use wig brushes to brush my hair. Um, but girl, that wig needs to be brushed a lot. Okay, it needs to be brushed. You need to put some kind of oil in it. Like it looks dry and brittle in the back. Okay, like it's just broken off of a bad term. Um, it's too, it's just too tangled if you ask me. And I'm like, you had time to comb. You had a whole season to look at yourself and know I need to get my wig fixed. And it's the same wig it seems that she's been wearing all season you have a whole wig line and that's the best you can come up that's the best girl by i was like you honey and karen stores her damn wigs in walmart bags well bags she bought from walmart girl fix it anyway it starts off with alcohol gate you know the whole monique dui drinking that whole thing you know monique still would not admit that she was drinking then drove her car and then an accident happened. You know, my thing is this. It don't matter what, if you had one drink, two drinks, three drinks, or four drinks. You had at least two drinks. 
and in the process of you having at least those two drinks you crashed your car so you were drinking and then driving and then an accident happened if you can't even say that's what happened without saying i wasn't drunk but i did drink and i did get to behind my little car and an accident didn't end up happening it's the truth that's what happened like it happened it literally happened that's like me saying i didn't drive to work yes i did i got up i got up out my bed i got in my car i drove to work and i got there that's what actually happened okay girl bye i was like it's just kind of you know and then she brought out people you know how she got a lot of backlash for the situation saying how some people were saying how she had a miscarriage or she deserved either she deserved a miscarriage or she had the miscarriage due to her being too drunk I, that is crazy that is asinine that is completely horrible that was a dumb person who said that that bullshit however you was drinking you drove and you crashed your car no one is saying that the, the alcohol cra made the car crash however before you crashed your car when driving you were drinking okay and ain't no other way to put that that's what happened and i feel like until she can accept that i feel like you knew you were drunk and you just refused to admit it because you don't want to be high, L, liable for driving while intoxicated so you just keep denying deny 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 now ashley bringing it up don't make it any less true saying like why would you bring it up or whatever why she's like but you mentioned the drinks too which monique did you know she then brings up well why didn't you say how you waited you know in your car that time 30 minutes because you were she said because no one asked me until i was on the on on watch what happened live with andy i think what monique forget is certain questions that people call into the show to ask are not asked by the producers on the show but someone asked her were you drinking too? Were you drinking and driving? She said, no. I waited because I knew I was drunk. So I had to wait. I had to clear my mind and, you know, get myself together, drink some water and calm down for about 30 minutes. So I didn't drive off initially, but Monique did. She's being so defensive about it. And Janelle, Giselle, and Andy both said, like, you're just so, you were so defensive from the beginning. It's just weird. Because she, cause she was guilty. That's simple. You know what I'm saying? Robin then brings up... And you got mad at me and Giselle, you know what I'm saying, for being, like, genu genuinely concerned. And it was crazy. You think, why did you get mad at us? Monique then says, you know, I apologize. You know, my energy was misdirected. It really was. Um, Karen then says, she believed Monique. Honey, Giselle and <laughs> Giselle and Addie said, well, that's because Karen had, <laughs> that's because Karen had a DUI before. I said, that could be true. Could absolutely be true. And then Karen said, you know what, Addie? I wouldn't drink with your raggedy ass. So shut the fuck up. I said, ooh, Candace feisty. But Karen, you have drank with me before. Not by myself, bitch. And she said, well, I wouldn't drink with you by myself either. Ash and Karen don't like each other enough to drink alone together. But, I mean, they all get along in the full circle of people. But it is what it is. But, I mean, again, just to wrap that whole thing up, Monique, you were drinking you then drove and you then drove your car so even if you don't want to say i was drinking and driving break it up in little pieces i was drinking mm -hmm, i was drinking i mean i did then drive okay and then after that i got into car accident it don't matter how you put it together it's the fucking truth it's what happened we know it's what's happened okay bye anyway um they start asking monique about her the website the not for lazy mom they're like what does it really mean like what does that title mean because some people were offended you know of thinking the title was offensive well I, that's on them i don't know why anyone would, why, why anyone would feel offended no it just means you know moms you know you know being a mom is not for like the lazy i forgot how she was saying it but you know giselle then said it do i was offended too because it's like you're saying if we don't do things that way it can be interpreted as then you know it's a lazy mom robin said like yeah it's like you're saying that if someone doesn't use oils and vinegars and, and, and stuff on their kids that they lazy you know well no that's not what my web has. my website has all kind of other stuff it's not just the oils i mean the name of the website now that i think about it i can see how someone could be offended because it do seem like you're saying this is my website not for lazy moms so if you come here and you do these things you can, you're not a lazy mom because this is not how you can do it you know what I'm saying? if you're lazy that i can see how that can come off to people even if that was not monique's intention okay it's the equivalent of name your product penis sucker 
why didn't mean for people to go suck penises, but you know what I'm saying? It's it the the name of it rub people the wrong way. I can get it, you know what I'm saying? But again, it's her website and they I think Robin <laughs> and Giselle both said they never they never went to the website. I haven't either. I don't care what it is. Um, uh, she says, but it's more than just about the oil stuff, whatever. But again, I can see how the name can kind of come off a different way. Um, you know, we see again, Giselle and Monique are not friends. I don't think Giselle and Monique will, be, will ever be friends. Okay. Monique says how, you know, we just keep having these, um, misunderstandings and then we don't mesh well. We don't mesh or whatever, but I feel like we can be friends in the future. You know, I do feel like they had the whole connection thing and when it was in France and whatnot, um, and I don't think they're enemies. I just think, you know, when we shoot and we shoot and we can be cordial and when we ain't shooting, fuck you. I think that's what it is. You know, Giselle then says how if Monique was able to take account for her actions and apologize what she needs to, we could be friends. I mean, that was a dig. It absolutely was a dig. Because, um, Giselle, you need to do that sometime too. However, I get what she means. Monique does stuff. She throws a rock or burns a house down and then say, who did that? You did. You burned the house down. You did that. You put a gasoline can next to a candle and you walked away. And then the house burned down. Okay? And, you know, I, but I, who cares? I mean, they've never really gotten along in the beginning anyway. I don't even think, I don't, I think Karen said Janette, Giselle is, is, is jealous of Monique. I don't think she's jealous. I think Giselle thinks she the shit no matter what. And no matter who else is around. Michelle, I mean not Michelle. Um, Giselle would think she the shit to sit next to Beyonce. Michelle Obama and Oprah. She would still think that she's the she's the, the top all be all grand dom of that group. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Um, because that's just who she is. However, I don't think she's jealous of Monique. I do think Monique thinks people are jealous of her because I think she thinks highly of herself and like people think she shouldn't. It's a weird thing to where I think she wants people to be jealous of her. It's the, I, that's what I think. I, I do. I do. But she got her money from her husband, so who cares? Anyway, um, they bring, they bring up, uh, Candace. Um, oh, the whole fight with her and Chris and what he said or whatever, and how she was getting mad and crying about, you know, him, um, saying, oh, she's a spoiled brat. Or she's the princess or whatever. She said, you know what? That wasn't all he said, though. He said some other things. And, you know, they're like, we couldn't really get to know you because you kept bringing up this whole thing with Chris. And it was like a dumb-ass argument. Well, it was really dumb because he also said how, you know what I'm saying, that I better not let the show go under my head because I ain't shit. I said, now, my thing, this is this. If, if I had to say what pissed me off the most about something someone said to me, the thing I would focus on is him saying, I ain't shit. I would not focus on you call me a princess. Yeah. Charlotte called me a princess. I wouldn't do that. I'm like, you made a whole thing about he called me a princess. The whole my person. You never once said he said anything else besides you was a, a, a sport ass princess. He never, you never said it at all. So I feel like it's uh, almost a lie to not come and say well he also said this because that was worse than the pr why didn't you lead with that and when they kept saying to you that's a little thing you never then said well he also said this you making this shit up now okay you, you're making this shit up the same way that wig ain't made up girl bye I can't take it anyway you focus on that, on that spoiled princess line and now you done made this shit up to make it seem as if oh it was more than that girl they fuck bye you know then we have Candace and Athy arguing back and forth and I feel like Candace at home practicing her clapping. Do you boo? All that, you know, I feel like she was at home practicing her comebacks or whatever. You know, she told <laughs> Ashley, you put your nose, your forehead, and your lips in everybody's business. I mean, you put your whole face in everybody's business and you know, you don't need to. Ashley is always in someone, always in someone else's business. And I feel, I don't feel like it's the way for her to deflect her own issues with her and Michael. I feel like she feels like I'm so open with me and Michael's issues. I'm going to expose everyone else's issues. And that ain't right. You need to sometimes shut the fuck up, Ashley, and not get involved in everyone else's shit. So, um, from that point, from them going back and forth, whatever, um, 
it was weird because they brought up how Candace would like kept bringing up how she was black and Chris was white and she kind of kept focusing on that whole situation and she got upset with Ashley said well you do focus on you know you do make comments about oh that's white that's white people suffer you know you kept making a reference to his race um but so you can't say that you don't do it because you consistently did it that pissed Candace off and it was a whole argument or whatever I think it was dumb because I I think I, think I said it in my review a couple of times you keep talking about how he white and you black like it's the weird thing you keep bringing it up I feel like when you are in a interracial relationship the one thing you should not keep focusing on is I'm this race and they're that race because you, that's what you would want that's what that's what you wouldn't want other people focusing on so why would you keep bringing it up and you did bring it up enough to where the viewers questioned it so girl bye um and it's it's, it's footage of you, of you saying this shit so i don't you know and she kept clapping oh clap 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 whatever what i'm like girl your fingers gonna break kind of fuck down girl you know what I'm gonna break them, them, them nails anyway um and clapping like that won't remove the footage of you saying things about how he's white and you're black or how he's doing some white people shit it won't change it anyway i don't really care um, they then bring up how Candace's mama was paying for a house. Candace, for some reason, thought we didn't remember her seeing that mama pay half of that damn house. She doesn't pay for the house. Well, she does. You know But now, how you guys think? If she put any dime towards that mortgage or that rent or whatever it is, she's helping pay the goddamn rent. Okay. Um, she says, well, Chris pays to have the rent. Does he? Does he really? And if it's a mortgage, why are you paying the rent on it? You know what I'm saying? Because if your mom. It's paying the full monthly mortgage on the whatever. Are y'all then paying her rent? And is Chris paying half the... I, I'm confused. But I'm like, who cares? You know, they then ask... No. Ashley said she not even a housewife. She's a house daughter. I said, bitch. Bitch, what? What the fuck did you just say? And, and you're a house trial up. I said, trial up? How old are you? You can tell Candace be around some old people. She got her trollop. How <laughs> you you are and you are and you a house bitch. Not one, no, not a house bitch. A house trollop. Well, you know house house troll. A house troll. We we'll call her a troll. That's what I would have did. Anyway, you know she then Andy then asked her like, well, how much does Chris own in that restaurant? Because again, we don't know if he really owned a lot of it. She said. That's not no one needs to know that. As again puts her foot in someone else's business and says, well, you know what? That's a valid question because you know our chef, you know what I'm saying, he does not own the restaurant. However, he does have a stake in it. It's a very, very, very small percentage, but he can be called an owner because he has a small percentage in the thing. And some people do that give someone a small percentage in the business, but they're not really, you know what I'm saying, a majority owner of the business. And so Again, Ashley would not say, I mean, no, Candace would not say how much she owns. But again, they going back and forth with Chris, I mean, Candace and how, you know what I'm saying, I'm not like you, whatever. I'm, you know, you out here showing everyone your whole life except your coochie. Well, she shouldn't show her coochie. She should not show her coochie. And Andy brought up a great point. Y'all both on a show about y'all lives. So you can't throw a dig at her saying she likes show, you know, put her things about her life in the public. That's the, that's the job, bitch. Did you forget? Did you forget? No? Okay. Anyway, um, Robin says I heard Ron on a good path now. I like that. I like the fact that they are in a better place. She brings up how, because Andy was shady and said, but you've been saying that for the whole, the whole time. She's like, no, before it was like, you know, we were, saying how the, we were getting back on track with the finances and, you know, being good parents to the kids. She's like, now it's about me and him, you know, moving forward and us kind of being, you know what I'm saying, more of a couple or whatever. Kudos to her. Um, Karen still lying, saying that she did not say yes to Robin's event. But I don't care. Okay, we know Karen lied about that. We know that Karen specifically said yes into her phone when she was asked if she was going to attend Robin's event, and then she did not go. That I don't, I'm not going to go back through it. Anyway, from there, it went from that conversation. Well, Karen kept saying, "I didn't. I dictated to the phone. I, I don't have time. I don't have to lie." Who? are you that I would lie to you it was a bunch of bullshit going back and forth and then um Robin's like what well, it was just the fact that she would lie about it. like it was just kind of crazy that she lied because the event that I had was like my event 
They then said the event that the event that Monique said, Oh my god, they reached out to me. Oh my god. That same organization reached out to all the ladies, not just Monique. So it was not like a thing that was like this. They said we all got the exact same invite that Monique got. Like it wasn't as if it was a special event for her. It was any it was for Anyone could have could have did that. Anyone, okay? She probably got it because we all said no. Is what I'm thinking. Anyway, so Robin said, like, you know, her event was like that important to her. What you mean? What you mean? I'm like, bitch, you know what she means. Calm your pregnant ass down, okay? And and he's like, you know, she just meant that her event was her event, whereas your event was something that they asked all the people to come to. And they didn't go because they had Robin's thing. But girl, bye, I don't really care. Anyway, um, we then see kind of Monique and Giselle and Robin kind of arguing a little bit. Because she, Robin's still upset about the whole Monique saying that, you know, Robin only like, that Giselle only like people that is like beneath her. Um, and she says how, well, you know, Robin, you follow Giselle around like a little puppy dog. I'm like, first of all, don't call me puppy dog. Okay, don't do that. And Giselle, like, no, we're just true friends. People like to say that Rob is a follower, that she's under Giselle's spell or whatever. They're friends, okay? And my thing is, when you are true friends with someone, I'm not, I'm going to back up whatever they say, okay? That's my friend, bitch, okay? So I'm, I will uh, agree with them. I will be with them. And come ride it, I come hella high water. I'm on their side. That is a true friendship. Now, is it too much sometimes? Absolutely. However, that's a true friend. I don't know what else someone wants to happen. Um, and I, I giggled to myself when Giselle said, Well, Monique, I'm sorry that you don't have real friends to know what it's like. I said, Bitch, the shade. Okay, the absolute fucking shade. Um, and again, the whole thing came from when Giselle, when Monique said to, to Giselle, um, you, you only like people beneath you like Robin. So it came from there. Then the whole fam. Excuse me, the whole fan page, that weird meme that Robin confronted excuse me, Monique about last well, earlier this season. On the show, Monique made it seem as if she had no idea who that fan page was ran by. She had no control of what was put on there, that it had shit to do with her. We do know that some people have fan pages that fans make and it has no connection to the actual star celebrity however we find out that the fan page that the meme came from was ran or that is ran by monique's brother monique you backpedal and pussy popped and danced around the goddamn uh, I, uh situation all season well when it first happened she made a whole f i don't i don't have time to be making people do it. she you would have thought that she did not know who it was it's your brother bitch and at that point in time, and like if your brother runs a fan page who posts stuff about your castmates, it would seem like it came from you. It's your brother. And not your long lost brother, like your brother brother who you talk to on an everyday goddamn basis. So you know you have access to tell him what not to do. That's like if my sister had a Jay Lee's Corner fan page and she up here talking shit about my subscribers. You know what I'm saying it would seem like it came from me. I would say no, sister, don't. I call my sister sister. No, sister, don't do that. Okay, you she have, you have control over. It. Even if you're not the one posting it yourself, you can take. Hey, brother, take that down. Don't do that. You know, don't don't post anything that go after the castmates. Post whatever else, but don't post nothing that will offend the people I'm cool with or whatever. Cause. It, Robin had a right to be upset because it, it did seem like it came from Monique. Why? Because the fucking brother ran the shit. I say, Monique, ooh, you lied all season, baby. All season. I remember her song. I don't know who, who run that page. I can't control that. I can't control that content. And it was your brother. Girl. <sighs> Karen, what was she talking about now? Karen was saying how, um, oh. They were talking about Ray and his issues or whatever. They some kind of way got to Karen saying how um, Michael Dick was on his blogs or whatever. And it's, it's that whole thing. It's like, I know my husband Dick. That was not my husband, whatever. That ain't definitely here nor there. Karen then says the picture that Bravo kept showing in their like 
you know, thing or whatever. It's not the picture that she saw. I saw a different photo, and it was your husband. The picture they keep showing with a dick blocked off, the body don't match Michael's. It does not. Um, but Karen keeps on, I have a whole, I saw a whole different picture or whatever. <laughs> As I know my husband's dick. You know what I'm saying? Um, the story was not true. She said, y'all know how honest I am about my, about my stuff. If it was true, I would have said it. I would have admitted it. And it's true. Ashley is a messy bitch. She always in everybody else's business. But for the life of me, she admits fucked up things that happened in her life. Like, she don't hide stuff. So I do believe if it was Michael, she would talk about it. Because they would have... They would have addressed it, in my opinion. Um, but I'm like, at this point, who cares? I mean, she's still married to me, so it doesn't matter. Um, but then, start talking about the press conference that, that Karen had when she came dressed in that goddamn camouflage and that big-ass Gucci belt, that Gucci wore a wrestling federation. She had, she had a bunch of wear around her waist. So Karen says how she felt like Giselle was, was basically petty and malicious when she wore that shirt to the conference. And but Andy said, you know, but you had a whole conference, um, but you had, like, like, you didn't answer stuff. You came as if you were, you know, dressed for war. So, Giselle again says, I thought that the shirt was supposed to be in fun and in jest because I thought the conference was stupid and crazy. So, I got a dumb, crazy shirt. You know, the ladies bring up how their issue with Karen was the tax issue was literally in the paper. Like, it wasn't as if it was, it was like a rumor from, no, it was in the paper we all read it we all saw it, so we all knew what was going on so of course we all talked about it um and they said they felt like karen kept being secretive about about it um so, so none of them like knew what was going on i mean karen wanted her privacy um but she's on a reality show so when the story's in the news your castmates will talk about it like i think that's the honest to god truth um It was like she never talked about it. So it seemed as if when she did talk about it, it was a lie. Because she would, she would kind of like go back and forth on certain things and like not want to admit something but will admit something else. And then, you know, they're saying this, uh, just how at that time they did not believe her. They did not trust her. They did not know what was going on. They did not know how to help her in any way because she kept being so closed off about the whole situation. She then brings up how, you know, I was going through a lot back then or whatever. Um, Y'all have to to understand I was under a lot of pressure a lot, a lot was going on um she says I was just survive I was just surviving and Giselle as a friend as a friend Giselle you should have came to me and asked me what was really going on what was really wrong but you did not care you know what I'm saying you only want to be messy um Giselle admits that she's like I asked to meet with you outside of meeting with the ladies and you wouldn't want to do it and then Karen said I was busy dealing with my sick parents, you know what I'm saying? And now my parents are dead and gone now. And this is what she got real. Okay, because Karen said that, honey. And the tears started coming. I mean, she got up. She instantly got up because she was crying. I mean, it was bad. Okay, it made me cry. You know what I'm saying? Because, again, I know that, that loss of losing your father. And at no age is it ever easy, okay? And she had just buried that man four, five days earlier. You know what I'm saying? That ain't enough time to process the death of a parent like it just isn't so again i said she should have called in sick not done it or whatever but she went and she was doing good until she said you know my parents are dead and gone i was one she i was going through a lot it was it got it got it got crazy and when she said it and walked off crying the ladies knew okay it's tough on her you know it's too soon or whatever you know she of course broke down left the set you know she's crying how it's just too soon um it's too soon it's too soon it's just all this message is too soon you know Giselle goes and comforts her and goes in the back and hugs her and lets her know how she was you know, she's a strong woman but I'm so tired of being strong I just don't want to be she's like well you know what it's you don't have to always be strong but just know that you are strong and that your parents raised you to be a strong black woman and that you are phenomenal in that and then she hugs her and gives her a kiss on the cheek and tells her how she loves her. And then, of course, it kind of goes off at that point. Um, Karen comes back, we know, as we see within the next preview. Um, she comes back and it seems that she got a whole, a whole second win. Um, it was a good reunion. It was a good. I, I hope they got through all the petty stuff now. And let's get to, like, the kind of real conversation. I did not care about some of the stuff that they talked about this time. But, I mean, it was entertaining, to say the least. You know, seeing... Karen have that breakdown, in my opinion, humanized her a little bit. It lets people know 
she was going through so much at the time she could not open up like you can see her breaking down now so it shows how she has been holding in so much you had no idea because she was just two seconds ago completely fine and then in that moment you know what i'm saying devastation so she was going through so much that she kept holding stuff in and she probably did not know the trust it was it's really that simple anyway hopefully the next reunion is just no i don't want no three part or not i told y'all before um but yeah put your comments below do not forget to subscribe to the channel and to oh like the video anyway i'm done peace